you won't have any uh, vampire threats here in San Diego. No, no neither so Mexico. So at least, at least we're safe. Here you are kind of safe from vampires. Today's episode of Clever News Feed is brought to you by T-Mobile. Keep up with the freshest pop culture news with T-Mobile. Hey guys, it's Sinead DeFries here at San Diego Comic-Con, sitting down with Richard Samuel from FX's The Strain. All right, so season three, coming in August. <laughs> You're super excited. So am I. What can you spill about the upcoming season? Nothing. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's It becomes really very, very edgy. Let's say we know since the very beginning that uh, New York is or is going to be infected mm -hmm. and that, that all this is is heading towards a real serious battle between vampires and uh, humans and in season three it's season three is the turning point yeah. of the whole thing it's after season three you can say there was a before and there is an after and that's exactly what happens in season three so we push all what we know and all what we have towards a peak and then... Madness. It's madness. And then you will have a new world. Of course, the one thing will continue. Uh, we have humans fighting vampires. But let's say the, the balance that we had so far is, um, so to say, a little bit shaken. Yeah. Is that is that unclear enough and clear it's, enough it's at the same perfect. time? It's perfect. It's <laughs> perfect. I can, that's good. That's good. But what... What do you think is like for you since season one? I mean, you don't seem too evil in real life, which is great. No, I'm <laughs> very happy for that, I can say. <laughs> but how do, you, how do you like playing that kind of character? Is it like fun for you? And how do you find the inspiration to get so in, in, in character for that kind of role? Oh my God. Now the very, the very thing that, that triggered my curiosity and my enthusiasm was to work with Guillermo del Toro right. in the first place and then to have a, a, a work I can do which is based on books. Mm -hmm. I, I like the, the fact that it's not just a script, it's something else, another source I can go to and, and be inspired by, you right. know? The, the sexy thing for me was to play a vampire and human at the same time. Uh, it means that you push what you humanly can offer as emotions to, to a very dark corner mm -hmm. because you're not human or let's say let's say you split yourself in two and all what is bad in you you give to, to the vampire and all what's good in you you give to your formal human life. Uh, that's a little bit simple but it's actually the thing that made the thing work, you know. Yeah. What was tricky, so was was, uh, but I was helped a lot by by Guillermo, you know. Uh, the very thing that that really convinced me to do it was actually the fact that those monsters were not creatures just to scare us. For Guillermo, they are his 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 kids. Right. You know, they they already exist. Of course, they are the fruit of his imagination, but they exist for him. They're, they're real existing creatures. And that's exactly what I wanted, you know. And for the monsters, uh, from my side, of course, there are brutal monsters, specifically the first layers of, of those who get infected and the humans turn into monsters. They're really uh, like that. But they evolve and become more intelligent mm -hmm. and... and I'm at the other uh, at the other end of, of that chain. Uh, uh, really, the, the the general or the most visible or most presentable part of evil, and that was actually a really 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 chosen thing to do. Yeah. What kind of challenges do you think vampires face in like everyday life? If vampires like if the would vampires exist. were at San Diego Comic Con, yes, walking down the street, what kind of challenges do you think that they would face? Well, the biggest thing in San Diego definitely is the sun. Right. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> it wouldn't no last doubt. very long. No, there's guess, huh? no doubt about yeah. that. Yeah, the, the thing is find f creating or finding uh, an environment that fits for for vampires, and the uh, next immediately the next thing is uh, f food food resources, finding food. You know. Uh, of course, humans, human blood is, is the, the, the nectar, mm, but they may, uh, they may um, drink other blood, you know. From the, from, from the moment it's blood, they can survive, you know. But the sun thing is, it's just, it's just terrific, you know. You won't have any uh, vampire threats here in San Diego. No. No, neither So at least, at least we're safe. Here you are kind of safe from vampires. That's good, that's good. You know. might have other threats here, but vampires, <laughs> all good. <laughs> What's the makeup process like on set? I'm the lucky guy. Yeah. I'm the lucky guy because 
I am the very vampire who does not who does not need to go through a three, four, five hour process of prosthetics and makeup and stuff like that. Every once in a while, I, I show up with my noseless face mm -hmm. or my vampire face. Then I taste what my comrades go through. It's four to six hours, three yeah. to six hours, depending. The master was six hours. Quinlan is, is in the beginning was four to five hours, but it's kind of a normal makeup process for yeah. any kind of, of actor. I still remember back in season one, the first time I saw you without the nose. We have a nose, but, but it's an inside nose. It's, that's insane. It's like saying women don't have a sex. It's you know just, what I mean? Yeah, I so know. It's, it's, I know no, what you mean. So it's, it's, uh, no, no, they have a nose. It's just uh, that morphologically they're different. Mm -hmm. Their and, nose and grew on the inside of it. They face. smell much better than humans do. They hear much better than mm -hmm. humans do. So they have just different noses, different ears, uh, different tongues. Yeah, if you well, know we what know I mean. that. <laughs> just the makeup itself is just incredible the way that they've kind of, it looks so real. But that was the very thing that was so important, you know? You make, you, you make the stuff up, yeah. and then it shows that you made it up. Nobody will take it as, as a believable threat. Right. When you create those monsters and you put some effort in it, and you have Guillermo del Toro and all his team who create them in a way that he can, he can talk for weeks about the biological process and how they and how they eat and how they sleep and uh, how their, their hair is or if they don't have hair, why they don't have hair or uh, why the nose is like it is and stuff like that. He has a complete full vision of who they are, you know? And that was actually the very thing that interested me, you know? They need to have their biological process, the, the sal saliva and mm -hmm. all this stuff, you know? And the tongue, which is the, 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 the end result of a complete different inner organic body, they have different organs and stuff like that. I was very much into that to understand what kind of thing I would, I would play, you know. You need to understand that, you know. What, it's not just a, a, a <laughs> the thing comes out, no. There is, it's, it's mm, here and there, it's connected to these muscles and uh, there is the stomach and the stomach is actually in, 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 in the tongue because you suck a liquid and uh, you have to put these efforts, you have to push them so far until you're sure that the end result is a, a believable creature. And then you, you then you just need to show them and you are scared because you know they really exist. Click left to check out the five craziest Pokemon Go stories, or click right to check out 16 more epic celeb falls. And another big thanks to T-Mobile with double the LTE coverage, now you can stay in the know in more places.